In this episode, I need to get this neck carved. Let's get to work. Starting this neck carve, I like to use what's commonly referred to as the facet method. It's a fairly straightforward approach where you basically carve a single facet down one edge of the neck, then a matching facet down the other side, and then you repeat that process along the edge of each facet with another narrower facet. Then you repeat yet again with another even narrower facet until eventually you've created so many progressively narrower facets that it begins to take on a rounded shape. Now, I know there's lots of builders out there who love their angle grinders and flap discs or some sort of saber bit to hog off massive amounts of material really quickly. But I find that this facet method is, while quite a bit slower than those power tool carving methods, a lot easier to keep under control and not get carried away. The great thing about wood is you can always take more off, but it becomes increasingly difficult to put it back on when you've gone too far. So my weapon of choice here is my good old Shinto saw rasp. This thing hogs off enough material to keep me moving forward in a timely manner, yet doesn't get away from me if I sneeze or blink too long. I'll drop an Amazon link to this tool below if you're interested in one for yourself. It's not any sort of sponsor link or affiliate program. I get paid nothing for it, so you have no obligation to buy one through that link. Anyways, we need to start shifting our focus to the volute, or as some people like to call it, the volute. I'm going to tell you, I checked the Merriam-Webster website, and they claim that it's pronounced volute, so that's what I'm going with. It was on the internet. You know it's got to be true, right? Now, volute carving is a bit more of a freeform kind of thing. You have a lot of creative expression you can, well, express here. So you may be asking, what's the point of a volute anyway? And that's a good question. One purpose of a volute is to help strengthen the joint between the neck and the headstock, especially on a multi-piece neck. Also, it can act as a position stop for the player. They feel the volute hit their hand when sliding to that position and they know they are home. So yes, it's a purely aesthetic piece, but it also does have a functional purpose too. Besides, I spent a lot of time gluing that thing up. I'm gonna carve it into something expressive. Don't at me. After getting the volute to a fairly decent point, it's back to fine-tuning the neck some more, blending everything in a bit better and just going over it until I'm pretty happy with it. Once I've hogged off enough material that it starts to become a little more detailed, 
I switch over to my super cheap set of dragon rasps, also from Amazon, and also linked below. This isn't the world's best set of rasps, but for the money, it's a quality set and works really well here. After I get the neck shaped into something that resembles a guitar neck, I like to give it a good once over with the sanding glove that I found on Amazon. Again, link below to all this stuff. The rasps can leave a pretty rough finish and I like to get it smoothed out to really see what's going on and to cut down on the splinters. If you saw my video on the body blank, you know what I'm talking about. This sanding glove seems super silly, and of course there's all the junior high jokes we can make about this motion, but I'm here to tell you, this thing actually works really well. Plus, sanding the neck using the palm of your hand helps to put a proper radius on the back of the neck. No need to get all crazy with an orbital sander and start sanding flat spots in it even though you're trying not to. Just glove up, start stroking that wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, pr probably, probably shouldn't say it like that. Yeah, the video of that isn't helping much, is it? And that image certainly isn't helping. You're welcome for that. You are welcome. And just like that, we've got something that resembles a guitar neck. So the next thing that I want to do is get the body wings back on this and uh, start kind of sketching out this heel transition and shaping this in a little bit better so that we can uh, get that kind of formed in there. And I'm sure off camera, I will uh, refine this a little bit more, but I really like where we're at here. This is starting to look real good. It feels good. It's got the thinness that I was looking for, more like that Ibanez style. So uh, yeah, we're definitely getting there. So let's get to the next part. The next task is to add position markers or side dots to it. I like to use my neck template to make sure I'm placing these on the correct frets. Any guitar builder that tells you he's never placed one in the wrong spot is lying to you. Trust me. With the locations marked, I then take an awl and make an indent for my drill bit to start. Then we grab this old Stanley hand drill and start drilling holes. Now, I know, you're going to say, that's what electric drills are for, or why not use a drill press? But again, I like to slow down and have some control here. After all the holes are drilled, it's time to start adding the side dot material. I'm using a white 2mm rod here for a higher contrast against that rosewood fretboard. And after quickly realizing that adding the CA glue to the hole first was the wrong method, I'm placing a drop of CA on the end of the rod, then sending it home in the hole, then using a pair of snips just to clip it off. Rinse and repeat from there. Once all of our side dots are added, a quick once over with the filing block cleans them up pretty quick.
The final task for this neck is to add the frets. I purchased a fret press in Calls for my drill press and was excited to give that a try, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't working very well for me. It would press the fret in on one side, but not all the way across. I may need to rethink how I'm doing this and run some practice runs. But after my struggle with the press method, I just went back to the trusty soft-tipped hammer and started whacking them in. Then we just need to snip the tips and run the filing block over them to get them cleaned up and yeah, We've got a fretted instrument now. And just like that, we've got frets in it. Now, these haven't been finished dressed. I'll leave that for the end of the build. I don't want to dress these frets now and then end up messing them up during the rest of the build. So I'll save the final detail work on these frets, filing the ends of them, leveling them, crowning them, all of that for the end of the build. The next thing we need to work on is getting this body glued together and start routing these pickups. So I'm going to save that for the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when that video is coming. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss it. And if you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with your friends, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next build. Thanks a lot. Voyeur Guitars. Who's watching you?